Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP as was the vast majority of crypto and finance. And with that being said, I hope that you are all having a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are watching this from. Um, as we address the overall market, I've been updating uh, the private Discord chat, which is again accessed through Patreon. Um, I've been addressing the overall moves in this market. And guys, we have been extremely precise on what has been happening around Bitcoin and even around a lot of these altcoins. Now, currently speaking, one thing that I will note is that the market is looking great. I personally believe that $40,000, under $40,000 for Bitcoin is not going to be seen. Um, again, that is my opinion. Of course, we could lose $40,000. Um, a significant move would signal that we are going under $40,000, which would essentially be us losing 40.6K, uh, which I did address in the Patreon group. But outside of that, I'm not here to talk about short term price targets. I'm actually here to talk about uh, what we are expecting in this next run. So as we look at XRP, Bitcoin, and Ethereum, I'm going to be looking at these three simply because these are some of the largest players in the space. Um, as we look at crypto right now, it has a valuation of $1.59 trillion. Okay, XRP has a $33 billion market cap versus Ethereum at a $267, almost a $268 billion market cap and Bitcoin at nearly an $841.5 billion in market cap. Why am I bringing this up? Why am I talking about it? Well, because listen, we are at a $1.59 trillion market cap for crypto. And if we go back in time and we go back to 2017, 2018, Bitcoin had a market cap at its topping point at about roughly $338 billion. During 2020 and 2021, Bitcoin topped out at about roughly $1.3 trillion versus a $3 trillion market cap of all of crypto. This was a 2.8x return from 2017 2018 even at the all-time highs and when we look at ethereum at about roughly the same it was a 2.9 x return um but also ethereum during 2017 2018 topped out at about roughly 145 billion and during 2020 and 2021 again ethereum topped out at about roughly 576 billion dollars now xrp is a little bit different because we did not gain we actually lost 30% versus 2017 2018's all time highs. Now, why am I bringing this up? Well, because again, if you do believe that the SEC stifled XRP's price appreciation, then you probably assume that we should have actually seen a 2.8x return off of the all time highs here, which again would have taken us in terms of a market cap valuation for um, XRP to roughly about $491 billion for XRP's market cap. Now, this would essentially have us sitting at about roughly five um, or so dollars. Um, technically, I think that at this market cap, we should be at around like $10. But again, I'm going off of the total supply. Um, going off the circulating supply, yeah, we should have been at roughly about $10. Anywhere between $7 to $10 is a perfect area of interest, in my opinion, for XRP. Um, but going into this next run up, I'm expecting roughly about the same. I think that we should see this valuation. If we don't, then I would be pretty concerned in terms of the overall um, performance on XRP's part. And again, that's not me saying, oh, XRP is a bad investment. We should sell. I'm just saying I would be concerned about the price appreciation on XRP for anyone that is not diversified. But Again, as we look at XRP and as we look at where we are at right now, the reason why I'm talking about this and the reason why I'm addressing this is everyone is talking about these ETFs now around Bitcoin. And for those that have missed it, basically a wave is coming in. We see over here, Justin, Wisdom Tree filed its fourth amendment to its spot Bitcoin ETF with the SEC. We also see over here, ARK Invest and 21 Shares filed its third amendment to its spot Bitcoin ETF with the SEC. And then also we see BlackRock. And there it is. BlackRock. BlackRock filed its third amendment to its spot Bitcoin ETF with the SEC. And we actually seen a post by uh, Lyle Pratt. Looks like BlackRock has caved to the SEC's demands to exclude in-kind re uh, creations and redemptions from their spot Bitcoin ETF. They've just filed their amendment. Relevant text highlighted below. These transactions will take place in exchange for cash. Subject to the in-kind regulatory approval, these transactions may also take place in exchange for Bitcoin. 
What do you see down here? A lot of people are talking a little bit about how they're going to be holding Bitcoin, what's going on with Bitcoin, and even addressing this. But ultimately, this means that they can't falsify any information regarding Bitcoin, which is actually very bullish and beneficial for the space. But beyond this, right, I even mentioned that they are hyping these ETFs far too much. It's hard not to think of them as the largest sell the e news event um, in crypto. And again, I'm quoting uh, Bitcoin Magazine because we've seen CNBC actually talking a little bit about the Bitcoin ETF. And uh, the, gray, the Grayscale CEO basically told CNBC that a spot Bitcoin ETF would unlock Bitcoin for about $30 trillion worth of advised wealth. Now, what exactly does this mean? Well, you don't even need to um, have me address this at all. Um, I have a video that really kind of addresses this perfectly, which we will watch here in a second. But I do want to play this clip for you guys because, again, it is significant to watch. Hey, here with us now uh, for a look at the crypto industry heading into the new year. Michael Sonnenschein, Grayscale uh, CEO. We got, we got a crypto super PAC trying to get things done. Maybe that's, maybe that's, what's, <laughs> maybe that's what's needed to get Congress to finally do something. Uh, Michael, you part of this? Uh, so that was actually just announced this morning. You know, for us in, at Grayscale over the last year, we've spent, I can't even tell you how many weeks on the Hill, really ensuring that we're advocating for our investors and making sure that as our regulators are looking at crypto, they're doing so through a really informed lens. So for us, it's really been more about education. Well, the, the, you think the easy gains have been made? Uh, people couldn't figure out what was happening with Bitcoin as it moved from 25 to, I think it almost got to 45 uh, at, at one point. Uh, but now, you know, we're talking about 41,000, even gold, I think, was trying to get through 2100 and uh, it failed in trying to do that. This was all interest rate related and, and uh, pivot related and the, the perception that maybe the Fed eases next year with, with some cuts. When does it refocus on a, a spot ETF? And, and do you expect that to, to get things moving again? Well, I think if you look back at this year, the price appreciation you've seen in Bitcoin has really been driven by both the macro and micro forces. I think you're right on the macro front. Inflationary pressures, rising rates have caused investors to think about Bitcoin as a store of value or, you know, a hedge in their portfolios. But on the micro front, you know, earlier this summer when my team had our court victory, I think that certainly unlocked a lot of optimism amongst investors about GBTC and the prospects for it to uplist as a spot Bitcoin ETF. So as we turn the corner into the new year, I know there's a lot of focus on that from the investment community. The 65,000, 100,000, I, I don't know what you think it, it is in the cards, but what do you think it's already in, this, in the, uh, the asset right now, if you want to call it an asset? Is it already there? Uh, once it happens, do you expect it to, to go to new highs? Or it just seems like we've already paid a lot of it forward with, with the move we saw from, I mean, it was as low as 17,000 last uh, this year. Sure, so, sure. Well, you know, Joe, I'm not one to make price predictions, but I do think there is a lot of optimism again in the market. I think a lot of investors are adding Bitcoin to their portfolios. And when we look ahead to the hopeful approval for spot Bitcoin ETFs, it really is going to unlock the opportunity to a part of the investment community that for better or worse, but I would say for worse, has unfortunately been locked out of the opportunity to participate in having Bitcoin exposure in their portfolios. So we're really talking about the advised market here in the U.S., which is today about $30 trillion worth of advised wealth um, that we hope the approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs, the uplisting of GBTC, will allow for that opportunity and for those investors to partake in it as well. I mean, the, the super PAC, I think, is going to earmark certain crypto-friendly uh, members of, of Congress. But you've got you know, on the other hand, when Jamie Dimon gets in front of, of senators and says that the only use case for Bitcoin is for terrorists and money launderers, and then you got Elizabeth Warren and other senators all nodding, I mean, you got to worry about that. You don't, you know, a, a spot ETF is one thing, but an outright ban isn't totally, look at that, the only uh, use case for, I mean, that is, I don't know, Jamie's a smart guy. It, it, it's always kind of, Surprising to me when I when I read something like that, but he's he's not uh, you know he's pretty outspoken and frank about what he does believe. So you can't I don't think you can just put the worst case scenario aside that eventually Congress does something really bad to to uh, crypto. Well, whether you're the CEO of a major financial institution or a sitting politician, you're, of course, going to be able to have your own personal opinions about these new technologies. That could be crypto, that could be Bitcoin specifically, but it's actually those very same financial institutions and, you know, the, the types of bills that, you know, sitting politicians are looking at now that are actually modifying themselves to account for the needs of modern day investors and modern day citizens. And that includes having access to new technologies like Bitcoin. So you can have personal opinions, but, you know, changes are very much already underway. So you guys have it. Now, again, with this, what does this $30 trillion worth of advised wealth essentially mean? 
Well, here you have an individual actually describing this, talking about it and addressing it. And we do see here from XRP Drops, CEO, Grayscale, $30 trillion of potential capital to come in, 0.5% to 5% of an allocation into Bitcoin over the next five to 10 years. That's somewhere between 150 billion to 1.5 trillion of capital that's gonna flow in to Bitcoin. And uh, again, here's the allocation. Now, remember that we've seen this in the past. And history doesn't usually repeat, it rhymes. And we're going to talk about that. The, out of that $30 trillion of advised capital that he's talking about, he's not talking about $30 trillion of inflow. He's saying that $30 trillion of potential capital to come in. And I think, and everyone can think differently, that 0.5 that to 5% of an allocation of that $30 trillion into Bitcoin over the next 5 to 10 years is a reasonable uh, conservative amount, especially because remember, it's not like any other asset. They're going to have every single one of their sales team, every single one of their advisors for the top advising firms on the planet calling all of their clients saying, hey, you should get an allocation, you should get an allocation, you should get an allocation. So I think 0.5 to 5% is reasonable of that capital. So what does that mean? That means there's somewhere between 150 billion to 1.5 trillion dollars of capital that's going to be flowing, actually flowing into Bitcoin. And of course, it's and remember, right, as we look at market cap wise, we're not talking about market cap in the sense that, hey, this is how much money is in Bitcoin. And I think that this is one of the biggest falsified narratives around crypto is, you know, XRP can't reach this market cap because it will be too expensive. Remember what market cap actually means. It's what somebody is willing to pay per coin times its circulating supply. Meaning if somebody is willing to take a transaction on the other end of someone selling XRP at say for so a dollar, that means that one XRP equals a dollar and the market cap at that time will be $54 billion going off the circulating supply. So outside of that, I do think that an ETF and these ETFs are going to be very bullish in the long term. I think short term, we are going to see a ton of hype, a ton of FOMO happening, and we're going to see the market do what the market does. Speculation, the retail FOMOing in like usual, and guess what? At that time, we are going to see some major sell-offs against that pressure because again, exit liquidity comes into the, to the market in the dumbest ways, and the ETF is the best way to sell the hype. But the thing about these ETFs, right, is that remember how long it took gold to actually skyrocket after having an ETF approval. We see over here, gold surged 350% after the first ETF approval. Could Bitcoin do the same? Now, again, within this, we also seen a chart, which was this one, comparing gold and comparing Bitcoin. If Bitcoin does the same exact thing, then we're talking about roughly $138,000 for one Bitcoin. Now, I actually think that that's a fair valuation. Again, that's nothing too crazy considering the fact that we have seen already $500,000 calls on Bitcoin. But again, this was at the time when Bitcoin was at around roughly $30,000. But again, here you have gold. This is the moment that we seen the ETF approval. And we could actually see that gold topped out for roughly 273 days. It dropped about 10%, which is not too much, right? Like this isn't a significant percentage drop, it's 10%. In crypto, we're so used to 10% being a slight pullback or anything. But this was 273 days, and then what followed through was basically up only, with of course pullbacks in between, because again, nothing goes up in a straight line, you will have pullbacks. But again, an ETF definitely opens the door of opportunity for investors to jump in heavy. And I've always said that the biggest thing about these ETFs is the UI, right? It provides a gateway through trusted players. And when I say trust, I mean in quotation marks, because again, as we look at these players that are trying to get in, these are Wall Street kings. They own large percentages of everything as well. So people trust them, or at least their reputation precedes them. So when we look at the retail, they feel a lot more comfortable investing into Bitcoin through safer so BlackRock or any of these other major funds. 
Um, so again, it is going to be a huge door that opens, but you got to understand that it's going to be some time until we start to see trillions flowing into Bitcoin. I think that everyone's under the impression that, oh, Bitcoin's just going to see a trillion dollars flood into it overnight. No, that's not how this works. But, and I say but, I do think that we could see a significant move on Bitcoin. And, you know, one thing to really kind of note is we're not going to see the same 280% run up on Bitcoin's all time high here in terms of market cap valuation. I actually think that we could very well see roughly a one, um, maybe even a one and a half X return on Bitcoin's overall market cap. And I think that this is like a good way to actually judge uh, where um, where Bitcoin could go and even XRP and the rest of the market. A 1.5 X return on uh, Bitcoin would take it to roughly about, you know, three point almost $3 trillion in value. Now, again, do I see uh, Bitcoin going up beyond this? It could. I'm just saying, and I'm being conservative on this because we have seen diminished returns on Bitcoin and on Ethereum and on pretty much any uh, currency within the space. And when I say diminished returns, I mean, you know, you're not going to see the same, you know, massive move that I've seen in the past in terms of percentage. Like, for example, if we're going off the lows here, I mean, this was roughly a 650% run up. This was about roughly a 293% run up off of the um, all time highs here. If we go off of the lows, then yeah, you're talking about roughly a 5,558% run up you're not going to see the same 5,000% run up off of these lows. And again, I think that that's one of the biggest problems that everyone assumes is, you know, we're just going to keep doing, you know, multiple X's like this would be an absurd amount for Ethereum. You're talking about a market cap much higher than Bitcoin at around roughly $6 trillion in market cap. That's not going to happen, which is why I say diminished returns will happen. But again, this was significantly lower than Ethereum back in 2017 uh, when we did see this. So obviously Ethereum during this time was a huge buy opportunity. Um, but beyond that, the thing that I'm really kind of just trying to uh, tell you guys is, you know, if we are going to start to see a lot of money flowing in, we're going to see Bitcoin hitting absurd market caps. Uh, we're going to see Ethereum hitting some pretty um, high market caps. Like I could see Ethereum hitting $1 trillion possibly in value. Um, or anywhere between 750 billion to 1 trillion. Um, and the overall market cap of crypto could very well top out at anywhere between five to $7 trillion. And it could even hit higher, but I'm being very safe on my uh, prediction on that. Um, but if we are seeing XRP remain in the top 10, even the top five, uh, then XRP is going to boast a significant amount of value. And the price per XRP could be in the double digit figures, anywhere between 10 to possibly even $20 in this next run up. Now, I personally will be happy with anywhere between five to $10 because that is what we were assuming um, XRP to hit back in 2020 and 2021. Obviously, yes, like I said, the SEC lawsuit definitely stifled a lot of the price action. Everyone will say, um, no, I don't think that that's what happened. I think that XRP was just, you know, seen diminished returns, this, that, whatever. But in my opinion, I do believe that the SEC lawsuit definitely did stifle XRP's price run. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below though. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But like I said, I think that a safe valuation uh, for XRP going into this next run up is around roughly $500 billion in market cap. And if we're going off of the current price of, uh, or the current market cap, sorry, of uh, XRP, and we're going to this level, you're talking about roughly a 13, uh, almost a 14 X return. And a lot of people will say, that is so low. Uh, I, I could see better returns with this coin, that coin. And yes, you could. You technically can. But XRP has retained its value for a very long time. It's been very stable. Right now, as we really kind of look at what XRP has been doing, it looks as though it's building a nice floor here, very similar to what we have seen back in the past. Again, history or, you know, if, if we go back into like the, these patterns, they're not going to repeat perfectly but they could definitely rhyme. And I do think that that's what we are going to see leading into 2024 and even 2025. Um, and I do think that XRP could have a significant run like this in the market. Now, what I'm really looking forward to with XRP long term is a utility driven bull run, but we're still some time away from that. Again, I still think that XRP is going to do very well in this next run. Um, the market has been heating up. A lot of eyes are on these e e ETFs and you definitely need to be cautious even with these ETFs. Like I said, it could be a sell the news event. It could see, you know, a pullback because we did see that even with gold. So definitely be cautious with this. 
I know that there's a lot of uh, a lot of hype behind these. I mean, hell, you don't even need to take my word for it. Look at the views. Look at the interactions on some of these tweets. Even the BlackRock uh, BlackRock one, 166,000 views, 3,000 likes. I mean, guys, everyone has been waiting on these ETF approvals for a while. And even the CNBC news, 300 and almost 40,000 views, 3.6K likes. So again, everyone is in anticipation for an ETF to finally go live. So uh, again, a lot of hype here. Definitely be cautious. Make sure that you are taking profits in the space as well, uh, because again, this market is full of speculation. So you need to make sure that you are de-risking when you can. Again, not financial advice, but I personally would de-risk when the, the door of opportunity does open. But with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on because more free content. If you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Peace out.